morning and welcome to In the Hoop. I'm George Ayub with the Grand Island Independent. My buddy, the thousand yard guy, Bobby Mills. We're here to talk high school basketball after a two week hiatus. What'd you do on your vacation? You went to basketball games. Right? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes. Couldn't wait to get there. Yeah, yeah, I know you spent some time at the holiday tournament at Northwest. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, well, why don't we start there? Northwest girls win their own holiday tournament. They did. Uh, that was a tough field that they had to, to get through with Beatrice. I know you were there, you announced the games. Right. Uh, what were your impressions? I thought it was the toughest girls tournament I'd ever seen outside of a state tournament. Number one, Seward. Number two, Beatrice. Number five, Holdridge. Number seven, Northwest. Number one in Class C1, Minden. And then Bennington, who is right on the verge of being ready. Right, right. And that Beatrice team they beat was awful good because they beat Seward the day they had before. They Seward, yeah. Great, great games. Gee, Merry Christmas. Try to pick an all-tournament team from that. Yeah. That's a task. That would be a task. On the boys' side, uh, the Vikings uh, got to the finals as I expected. I figured that that it would be Beatrice and Northwest in the finals. That came down to uh, the last minute. They, they had the ball, couldn't get a shot off. Nope. So that's typical, though, I think of the... It looks like Jim Weeks... His system still looks to be there. Uh, I, he was there. He, was he there? And he's gone on, obviously, yep. to Doan College, and they're doing having a great year. Uh, but it looked like the system was still in place. It, it was a tough road for both the boys and girls because they played the first day. And Beatrice did not play the first day. So Northwest had to win three games on either side to get to win this tournament. And the boys just, just, had, just temporarily ran out of sharpness not ran out of gas but they just ran out of uh composure just for just mm -hmm. for an instant and beatrice took advantage of one that. thing holiday tournaments uh, i think test is how well your uh conditioning is because you know you've played m maybe six maybe eight games but you might play two on a weekend you get a break or you play on a thursday or saturday you play three days in a row or even two and then on it like grand island's playing on today mm -hmm. I, you know that steps it up a little bit for it does. that and, and you're not in your end obviously at the end of the season conditioning so i can see where you know kids the jump shot in the last few minutes might not be as sharp as it was i'll tell you something half. though george neither northwest boys or girls look like they had a break they were that sharp yeah so it must have been well, but just that little tiny lapse, and the foul, they fouled Beatrice, and Beatrice missed two free throws the entire game. Yeah, again, so, it's good. The weak system is still in order. So. <laughs> yes. Uh, Grand Island Senior High is playing uh, as we speak. Uh, they're playing it for fifth place in the in the uh, uh, hack tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, first win of the year, they got over Lincoln High, and um, so a glimmer of hope there for Jeff Ofeld's team. They also played Southeast very tough in the opening round after Southeast cleaned their clocks out here. Yep, and they looked, I mean, they must have, I didn't see the line score, but they must have played very well. Yeah, they, they were right with them right down to the end. I think it was 54-46 uh, was the final. Yep. But uh, they were right with them right to the end. So there's wow. some improvement, and that's good news for Jeff Ophel. Uh Kelly Jeffries, uh, girls uh, on the on the girls' side, uh, they are also playing in the tournament today, and they played earlier this morning. I didn't get a score yet from that. Uh, both teams with one win on the, on the season, but, you know, something to look forward to building on that momentum. Over on Ruby Avenue, we had uh, Central Catholic uh, with the tournament, and they had an easy time with mm -hmm. uh, Superior and Fullerton, I believe it was. Uh, Superior, I think, Fillmore Central, maybe. Or Fillmore yeah. Central, yeah. Fullerton yeah. was in it, but, but uh, that, you know, those two teams. I, this is on the boys' side, actually. Boys' say. side, yeah. And, and those, I think the teams that they played maybe had one, one win between them, so... Maybe they'll get a better tournament together. Not there's nothing wrong with those teams. But those teams are having a tough time. But they, they still are. they're still competing and, and want to come in and try to play a team like Central Catholic, mm -hmm. which which is I admir you know very admirable. All right now, the Central Catholic girls are three and seven. You know, and and uh, I thought they'd be a 500 team. Um, I did too. And so you know, I think uh, Coach Andy Anspa is going to have to try to find a different, you know, a better combination. He's played, when we've seen him play, he played a lot of girls. Yep. And, of course, you know, after Christmas, you can you can begin to find a lineup that you want to stick with. So maybe that's, he's still experimenting a little bit there. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. Over at Heartland Lutheran, uh, the boys have been kind of up and down, and, and uh, I think they are about a 500 team. Let me check here real quickly. But they got third up at the Alba tournament. Have you seen them play yet? No, I haven't. But, uh I have a lot of respect for Lloyd Wagnus because he's not afraid to schedule anybody. And a prime example of that is this weekend they're going to that Lutheran tournament at Concordia. 
Look that's who's a, in that. That's a tough field. Lincoln Lutheran, who is C1, C2, one of the best teams in there, Lutheran High Northeast, and then Omaha Concordia, who has a formidable girls team, not mm -hmm. a boys team, but they're still stepping up, up, up in that tournament. Not afraid to play yeah. anybody. And they're in at 4-4 four, four right now. And so, right. uh, you know, that the theory, obviously, is that you'll play better at the end of the year if you can test it. Um, and so, he, you know, he's got some horses out there. I think uh, Isaac Spatzdoster is going to lead him, and so that could pay off right at the end. Um, Coach Fredrickson's girls are two and six. They got their first win. They're going to get another one right after that. So they're kind of on the on the winning path too. So city teams, I think, are maybe turned a little bit of a corner, led obviously by the Vikings. Um, Good, yeah, they're, they're, it's very good basketball out there. I want to say one thing about senior high's boys. I have never in all my years seen a team smaller in physical stature than that. Mm -hmm. But they compete. They do compete. They have a very favorable schedule after the first of the year, and it's going to set things up for them getting better and better, and they'll have a good team next year because they're obviously having everybody back. But they're small, but they compete yeah, hard. They have no seniors on the team. No. None at all. And you're right. And, and you know, they get in the weight room, and these are young kids. I know. You know, if you, if you just look at a kid from a, from a freshman, sophomore, a couple years later, you know, they put on 20, 30 pounds of muscle. You know, they get him in the weight room. So, you know, the, the key, I think, for Coach Hofelt is for the boys, and this is probably true with Coach Jeffries because she also has a young team. Don't, you know, don't lose your faith. No. You know, stick with what you know. And uh, so it was great for them to get the win. It's, it's not like the old days where guys like George Abe as a freshman looked like this. They, you know, there's got to be sometimes, yeah. Really? Yes. For your New Year's resolution, you should quit lying. <laughs> <laughs> I ran against you, George. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, well, I have, uh, we have three peak performances that we're going to honor this week. Uh, all come from city schools. The first is great. Isaac Splatz-Dosser from Hartland Lutheran. Had 31 against uh, Alba North Loop Scotia, the host team in their tournament to get the third place in that tournament. And uh, You've seen Isaac play, and he's, he, he can do just about anything on the basketball court. Yep. Their big kid has been, has been out and is now starting to get back into shape and back to play. So Isaac will probably move away from the basket a little bit yep. more. But uh, his 31, I think, sends a message to the D2 teams around here that uh, uh, you know the Red Hornets, led by Spatstas, are going to be reckoned with. So yep. he'll be tested in the tournament. That you talked about, right? He should. He's a good player, and he can drive to the hoop. He can shoot close to the hoop. He can shoot threes. But they're they run and gun out there, so they're it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, our second peak performance that we're honoring today is Pierce Allman, a sophomore at Grand Island Senior High, at 19 in the team's first win at Lincoln uh, against Lincoln High, including free. Th I can say this: three free throws with Ooh. two seconds left. He was fouled. Uh, shooting a three. I'm sure the Lincoln High coach is still having the kid who did that run. But uh, wow. uh, anyway, Pierce stepped to the line. They were down a point and made them, all three of them, they went at 51-49, gets them over the hump. You know, that, that elephant in the room, you haven't won, that's gone. I know. You know it's gone. And so uh, good for Pierce. Uh, you know, he played a lot of summer ball, and, and uh, obviously he's going to be their offensive leader. But uh, as you said earlier, as these kids, you know, as these kids get a little bigger, they're going to be th – Jeff could really have a good team here in a couple of years. But they play good defense, too, yeah. and that's what I like. And Pierce Allman's not afraid to shoot. No. He, he, he misses a couple, he'll keep trying. All right. And that's I, the well, important and that's thing. What, and, you know, and I'm sure the coaches said, we need you to score the yes, basketball. Sir. You know, So you can't miss a couple, and then you know, you, you got to keep shooting. Then yeah. our third uh, peak performance, Mackenzie Brown led her team to the tournament victory at Northwest. Also, against Minden, set a school record, 30 points against Minden. So congratulations to her. Terrific athlete. Outstanding in that tournament. Yeah. Just there were some matchups that I couldn't even sleep at night. Yeah. Some of them, I mean, her and Hannah Taverti from Seward or her and Hannah Barnard from Beatrice, just two All-Staters going at it. And McKenzie's just so agile. She scores 31 night, and then they shut her off, and she has a gazillion assists. Right. She knows exactly <laughs> she what to do. Many She's got, you know, there's two things that McKenzie has. She has that Jim Rat mentality. She knows what to do on the basketball court. And you, besides just being a terrific athlete, yep. the other thing that I think really will help the, the Northwest girls is the, a bunch of them played on that state championship volleyball team. Oh boy! The confidence that comes from that winning a state championship, and just it, it's just you know it's terrific. So I think that they're uh, they're really primed for a good run. They are. They are. Uh, will they be? I mean, they're right up in the top three. They have to be. Right. So it'll be great. Great, great team. So we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get three certificates. 
ready for Isaac Splatt, Stasser, Pierce Almond, and Mackenzie Brown to get those out to the school. So congratulations to those, those three kids. We will be back next week with another edition of In the Hoop. Uh, our new sponsor is Play It Again Sports. Great, so, great people. Great people out there at Play It Again Sports, and we appreciate their sponsorship. And so uh, for Bobby Mills, I'm George Ayub. This has been In the Hoop from TheIndependent.com.